Welcome sa ating channel, we are here to talk about the Intel Core i7-12700K after series of videos talking about the i9-12900K. Yes, it took a while for us to talk about the i7-12700K. Bakit hindi ko ginawa kagad right away after na nailan siyang i7? That is because nga po, we are quite less privileged pagdating sa access ng i7 that time and I choose to go ahead and talk about the i9-12900K. Pero ito naman po yung dahilan kung bakit ko rin medyo mas hinuli ang i7 because mas marami nga rin po sa atin ang mas excited and also for us to have a bit more stable uh, softwares when we go ahead and talk about the i7 and that is also for a more accurate data. I may also include in here how will it perform compared sa Ryzen 7. I know some of you guys have already spotted a lot of articles about the i7 and maybe you have already an idea Pero this is a video that may showcase different kind of benchmarks here in the Philippines at the same time some benchmarks that may not be covered by other tech reviewers with their channel especially that we will be very very on point on this video and just go ahead and talk about the numbers with no much introductions or narrative. Now ayun nga po, we are very very excited to talk about this i7-12700K from gaming to rendering and with different kind of benchmarks done with different presets at the same time up to the point of manual overclocking. Now with that being said and for more videos like this, feel free to subscribe. This video is brought to you by SCDKey, the best website that you may visit in terms of uh, very affordable deals and best offer para sa application softwares games and yes operating system and there you are you may check the windows 10 pro and by using our promo code ma avail mo lang siya ng around 14 dollars and 95 cents or 700 plus pesos that's it mga kaibigan check the description below may mga links po tayo dyan to go directly sa kanilang website as i have said earlier no more introduction let's go ahead and talk about the benchmark so 12700K is compared with the competitor, of course, AMD Ryzen 7 5800X. How will this processor perform pagdating sa gaming? And here is the first graph that you may have. The 1% low 12700K over the 5800X Ryzen 7 ng AMD and Intel wins on this benchmark. Magigita po natin that not even close on some games and others talagang lopsided na 12700K is the clear winner pagdating sa gaming. Now, I will explain it further later ang ating 1% low benchmark together with our average FPS. Because with our average FPS, here we go again with the 12700K as the clear winner over the Ryzen 7 5800X. However, you may also see in there that there is a game where Ryzen 7 5800X is the winner. Pero dito nga po ngayon pupunta or papasok kung bakit nga po importante ang ating 1% low. Average FPS is something that will define how good is that processor over the other or that hardware over the other. Pero eto naman po yung dahilan kung bakit importante ipinakita ko kagad ang 1% low. Ibig sabihin lang po na ito, Pag ang 12700K comes with a better performance pagdating sa 1% low, ibig sabihin less stutter. Hindi ka po makaka-experience ng mas maraming dip or FPS drop pagdating sa gaming. Tulad nga sinabi nila, mas natatandaan ng tao kung ilang beses ka nagkamali kaysa sa mas marami kang nagawang kabutihan. So ganun din po yan pagdating sa average FPS at saka 1% low. Ibig sabihin, mas matatandaan ng isang gamer kung ilang beses siya nagkaroon ng lag or stutter dahil sa mababang 1% low kaysa sa ilang beses na nandun siya sa mas magandang FPS which is the average FPS. Kaya napaka-importante ang 1% low not only for video cards but also for processors even though hindi siya ganun ka-relevant pagdating sa processor especially with a kind of i7 na most likely if you can afford to go for an i7 where you may also settle down with 1440p resolution na diminishing na po yung return. Now, let's go deeper about sa 12700K since we partner this processor with the Z690 Aorus motherboard. Now, why I highlighted our Z690 Aorus motherboard? Dahil nga po ang ating Z690 Aorus motherboard comes with that feature or presets if you want to maximize your processor pagdating sa gaming. And meron po siyang gaming mode preset. And dito ngayon titinan natin how will this 12700K perform pagdating sa default versus gaming mode. And we use the game GTA 5 for the side-by-side -side comparison real-world performance. 
Yes, na-disable po yung mga efficiency course and makikita nyo po dyan that there is really an advantage over the default configuration. Pero what if you are a user na hindi naman gaming ang primary reason why you consider Intel Core i7-12700K? Now, here we add other presets ng ating Gigabyte motherboard at the same time with that multi-core enhanced performance. And there you have the data na pagdating na sa production that gaming mode configuration or preset will give you a disadvantage kung ang purpose mo is not really into gaming. So, ibig sabihin lang po niyan, it's better just to settle down with the max performance preset or that multi-core enhanced performance preset ng ating processor instead of going sa gaming mode kung production ang pinaka-primary reason why you will settle down with your Intel Core i7-12700K processor. Now, of course, to easily figure out how will this Intel Core i7 be positioned compared sa competition or if you want to know if this is really a worth it processor, syempre, hindi pwedeng hindi maisama po sa ating comparison ang kanyang counterpart sa AMD, the Ryzen 7. Now, again, here is the comparison between these two processors pagdating naman sa ating rendering. And there you have the data with the Blender 3D, Intel Core i7-12700K by wide margin, winner over the Ryzen 7 5800X. So those architects out there, 3D animation editors or guys out there that are into Autodesk, Revit, engineering, and the uh, primary uh, hardware that they will be using for uh, uh, rendering is processor, 12700K is way better than the AMD Ryzen. Now let's move on naman sa ating Adobe products. And makikita nyo po dyan, that is still Intel Core i7-12700K is the winner pagdating sa Premiere and pagdating naman po sa Photoshop is still Intel is the clear winner pagdating sa ating processor's choice. Now of course, those numbers are just open in there and nandiyan din po lahat ng tools na ginamit natin. If you want to replicate the benchmark, you may go ahead and do it with your own configurations or with your own system units. Basta take into consideration that the Intel Core i7-12700K comes with this 2x16 DDR5 RAMs and then pagdating naman po sa ating AMD Ryzen 7 5800X comes with 4x8 32GB DDR4 RAMs. Pero ang tanong dito, everything is good ba talaga pagdating sa ating Intel? Of course, syempre, walang perfect na electronic hardware. Meron pa rin yan pros and cons. Dito makikita natin pagdating sa ating power consumption that the Intel Core i7-12700K is my go-to processor especially that pagdating sa idle na ang aking lifestyle, pag humarap ako sa computer, I will be using it for a couple of hours, then maybe for one hour or two, aalis ako um, nasa meeting or whatsoever So hindi ko na sinashutdown yung aking computer Just uh, let it there na naka-open Para pagbalik ko, I may go ahead and uh, continue my task Or kung ano mang ginagawa ko sa aking computer And yun yung pinaka-advantage ng ating Intel Core i7-12700K 1 to 2 watts lang yung kanyang idle power consumption sa processor Pero, on the other side Once I use this 12700K pagdating sa mga CPU intensive tasks, there you have the data. Intel Core i7-12700K comes with very high power consumption compared sa kanyang counterpart. As much as marami yung matitipid ko with this Intel Core i7 pagdating sa idle power consumption, ganun din kalakas yung makukonsumo niya pagdating naman sa CPU intensive task. And then lastly, of course, the manual overclocking. Is it worth it to consider? Of course, we tried our best to make it work na mas malaki yung advantage natin pagdating sa manual overclocking, especially that if in case you will go for a manual overclocking, you can configure the voltage, at least you will have a better temperature, at the same time, better performance. Pero with the manual overclocking na ginawa natin, there you have the data na hindi siya worth it. Ibig sabihin, pag nag-manual overclocking ka with the 12700K, that marginal difference is acceptable kung preset lang po siya. Like you will just configure one button or settings and there you have, uh, you can use your processor na stable siya. Pero with manual overclocking where you are putting all of the risk na in case na magkamali ka, pwedeng mamatay yung processor, motherboard, and after that, most likely, hindi pa siya magiging stable. And at the same time, if in case you kill the processor, you will avail the warranty. Napakahirap ng warranty ngayon, shortage ngayon. There will be a struggle pagdating sa stocks. So automatically, there will be also a struggle pagdating sa replacement. So with all of those risks na pwedeng mangyari, 
if you do the manual overclocking, that performance gain is not really worth it. It's just better to settle down the default settings or go ahead and check those presets. And uh, just be sure to have a better cooling system or better airflow para dating sa yung uh, casing para kahit pa paano hindi compromise yung performance or kahit pa paano uh, you will have a stable or smooth experience with your Intel Core i7-12700K. Now, other than that, of course, the 12700K comes with the built-in graphics and contrary sa kanyang competitor. Now, at least that will give you a time to save for a better video card or wait for the price drop. So, with that being said, it's up to you now, guys, if you will consider the Intel Core i7-12700K. I think this is uh, the go-to processor most of us may consider, especially here in the Philippines. And for more videos like this, feel free to subscribe.